five years ago I had a trip booked to this place, Kabak Beach, on the southwest coast of Turkey. That trip was also timed with the Perseid meteor shower and a new moon, and it became the reason that I bought my first camera. Here's me with a Canon 100D, much shorter hair, and absolutely no idea about how much this decision was about to change the rest of my life. <laughs> but this year I've decided to come to a little place, a hotel called Yedi Burunlar Lighthouse. It's a little bit away from the growing light pollution of Fethiye and Uludeniz and Kabak. It's also a bit higher up on top of the mountains as well, so we can see a bit more of the sky. Hopefully capture a few more meteors. I just want to just chill out and enjoy the show. We found the perfect little balcony next to the swimming pool, so we're going to get some deck chairs up there. Lie down, set the cameras off, and just enjoy the show. So this spot is pretty awesome, but there's one problem, and that is that the the view, like the best view, is facing directly into the worst light pollution. There's much darker skies behind with the Milky Way and Jupiter, but compositionally there's not much going on. So I think I'm going to stick with the spectacular view. And when the moon comes up at around midnight, the light pollution's not going to be that much of an issue anyway. Either way, this little spot here is nice. Got the deck chairs out on the balcony so we can just lie down, chill out, and just enjoy the show. I want at least one big one and I'll be happy. Even if I just see it and I don't capture it, I'll be happy. I've got the Sony A7S set up with the 20mm lens shooting nice and wide. Hoping to get the big ones, try and get multiple meteors for a composite image. And I'm going to take one image for the foreground because the scene is quite wide and then I'm going to pan up to the sky before I start the time lapse uh, just to increase my chance of catching meteors and then I think with my other camera, my a7 III I'm going to try 55mm see if I can get a nice close-up with a 55mm focal length and because it's a longer focal length I'm going to aim low on the horizon that way I'm looking through more of Earth's atmosphere should get a much better chance of getting a meteor and then with this a7s hopefully i can catch some meteors in real time video at least that's the plan so we'll see how that goes so we kicked back on the deck chairs set the cameras off rolling and just locked our eyes on the skies most outlets predicted the peak would be between the 11th and the 12th but the rates that night weren't very good it just didn't feel like the Perseids. I mean we saw a handful but once the moon came up things really just died down. And it's no secret that the Perseid seems to be decreasing year on year as the dust tail of Comet Swift Tuttle starts to thin out. But it felt particularly low this year. Thankfully on the night of the 12th into the 13th, things really started to pick up and it started to feel a lot more like the Perseid Meteor Shower. Didn't get to see one big fireball, but I think we just missed out because the skies behind the mountains lit up at one moment and then friends later confirmed that they saw an absolute monster, so I was really gutted about that. But perhaps the biggest surprise of the night was to turn around and see a badger drinking out of the swimming pool. I had absolutely no idea they were badgers in Turkey. But in terms of the photographs that I took, I had absolutely zero luck meters, not even a single meteor. But I did capture enough meteors with the 20mm to do a meteor shower composite image. In total, I took 1,360 images, and these are all of the decent meteors that I caught in all of those images. I didn't bother with the small ones, but these were all of the decent ones. And there's a tutorial over on my Patreon page for how I make these images. 
After I gave up on the 55mm, I put the 15mm Leoa lens on and managed to salvage a few meteors in another composition. And even when the moon came up, I still managed to capture a couple of big ones because the Perseids can be quite bright and leave persistent trains. And if you couldn't tell from this lazy ass vlog, I'm taking a much needed break. But I will be back for what's in the night sky. So if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.